looking inside garments that we own actually can unlock uh, the key to learning garment construction. And if you're really lucky, you might actually find a few uh, stories as well. Maybe this garment has had another life underneath here that you can figure out. I have uh, three garments that I am going to show you today to look inside because one, they find I find them very interesting in the way that the garment construction, like it, how it's made. So it gives me ideas for garment construction and a few little stories as well. It might just give you a new way to look at clothing you own to help you learn garment construction and find a few stories too. Welcome back my sewing friends. It is always so lovely to see your beautiful smiling faces here. Welcome, if you're actually just brand new here, uh, my name's Evelyn Wood and I'm the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com. Here on this channel, we talk everything about garment sewing so you can make the clothes that you dream of and ones that fit you. One of the ways that uh, I like to learn garment construction is by looking inside clothing that we already own. And this is one of the things that I teach uh, all my members, Vintage Sewing School, and here I've talked about other videos on garment archaeology before. And so, well, first of all, what is garment archaeology? This is what I call the process of looking inside garments. So inside at the seams, at the stitching, really at the details and what's going on to basically uncover and discover either the construction, how it was made, what order it was all put together in. And sometimes if you're really lucky, as I said, you actually have a story like a vintage garment might have already been taken in, might have had a different facing or the hem's been taken up or something interesting. Uh, you can piece together stories, particularly with vintage vintage garments uh, of maybe its past life, which is really fun. I know you're a crazy um, sewist just like me and you find this really interesting too. So I've got three pieces that I found really interesting that I think you will find interesting too. The first one is this green top. What I found interesting with this green top is how well the construction has been thought out and planned. First of all, this sleeve, I mean, hello, it is gorgeous, right? But it's not a typical flutter sleeve, like it's not just a circle sewn on. And so I went investigating and this is how I found out how it's constructed. And you know what? I think I might have to recreate this one because it is beautiful. So it doesn't just sit kind of um, normal. You actually have this, um, the sleeve comes up right along the shoulder. And so you've got this really nice smooth, flat, flush, um, you know, sleeve line that gives a really different silhouette than if the seam was right at the shoulder. It's pushed up and you get that nice fluttery. How they've achieved that is really quite simple. Uh, so flipping this up, I was able to have a look underneath here and see that they've actually just uh, made a top stitch from here to here uh, with the pieces together. So they've the seam is actually here, as you can see, and then they've folded it up and stitched it. So as it folds back, obviously it holds here rather than um, all the way back at the actual seam. So it has started off with a complete circle. We can see it's all overlocked through here. And then they've made like pleats in it in different ways. And look at this back one. So it is stitched here and stitched down here. This back one actually holds this piece in place, making it look like we've got this seam and the fold just naturally falls exactly from where that seam is. I know, it's so clever, so clever. And so at the front again, that's what I'm talking about, gives that you've got the seam coming, seemingly look seam through here, and then uh, the fold just comes down from there. Really, really well thought out, really clever. It is not quite just a full circle, it's a shaped, circle so I'd have to unpick it and really get the shape and then where all those stitching lines are to really figure that out but the other interesting thing when I went looking for this I found something else and as this is shows how well this has been thought out so I'll just put that to the top because as when this sits here like this even with your arm coming out of the front here this um, bottom section of the sleeve is very visible and this is really what you see because your arm will move up and about they've actually seamed the right side of the seam is on this side, which technically is always usually the inside of our seam. And so they have hemmed it correctly with the hem going around. So you can see that the hem is actually showing wrong side here, but the right side of the seam is here. 
and the wrong side is underneath here with a beautiful French seam to really hold everything in nicely. Would have been nice, I think, to have a binding around this seam edge in here to finish that off, but you know, I think all in all this, this garment was really well made and really the design was thought about really well and it's given me so many ideas to recreate this basically myself. Quite simple, it just requires a little bit of thought. And then I've come across recently this lovely tartan skirt that I pulled out because it's winter. Now it's new season, a wool skirt seems appropriate. And one of the things I looked at was the hem. And I thought, how interesting, because this is definitely something that would have tripped me up when I first started sewing. And it's only through uh, more years and years of experience I know what is going on here. And that is I noticed that the hem has been stitched uh, before the side seam and you've got the side seam coming all the way through the hem here that is not normal that is absolutely not what we do in garment construction no because it just doesn't quite look right why would they do this this is actually from quite a good brand everything else has been done so well you can see all these stripes match up perfectly it's obviously well made why did they do this? The clue is in this permanent pleating. Now, only because I've worked in industry and I know, I know that you can only permanently pleat uh, synthetic fabrics, of course, and it uh, requires a process. And generally it's done in blank bits of fabric. You don't pleat it once it's already a garment because that's way too hard. So this would have been pleated in sections once the garment was cut or maybe even just as fabric. And it would have been permanently pleated at that point, And then the garment was sewn together. And so to be able to permanently pleat the hem, the hem would have need to already be up turned this way because otherwise if it was down and then you turned it up, the the pleating, this, the pressing would be in the wrong direction as it's turned up. So it needs to be permanently pleated with the hem actually already in place. And so that is why the hem was sewn, uh, it, it's pleated, and then the side seam was sewn. I know, very curious. I bet, I wonder if you would have thought of that. Let me know in the comments down below. But then also, this was super interesting. I think you'll really enjoy this too. Another garment construction uh, method is on the zip here. So we've already looked at the pleating and the pleats come, they're stitched down to about hip level and then uh, box pleated out. And so this is all the way around, including the side seam and we have the zip here, which causes, oh gosh, make, gives me tizzy little headache thinking how I would do this. Looking at it, brilliant. So it is still pleated, a little box pleat here at the bottom of the zip, zip ends here, just like the others. Having a look at how this has been made is that it has been constructed with a kind of, um, you know, facing, self-facing extension underneath the zip here that actually forms the pleat. So this, if I pulled this out, this is actually one piece of fabric all through here. It's got the zip in, it's been pleated in, and it ends up with just the right amount. And if I take my fingers and come up the pleat, I can actually, there's an actual hole and it comes all of the way up and through. And so it's just the fabric that has been pleated in, the zip encased and only stitched down just that wee little bit past the zip that's created this and allowed them to have box pleats through this invisible zip. Goodness, that was really, really well thought out. And not to mention pattern matching heaven over here. Now, those two are super interesting for garment construction. Uh, leave me a comment below if you are also nerding out, like sewing nerding out like I am too. Leave that comment down below. Okay, so the next one I have for you is this red linen uh, dress that I was getting ready to refashion. Now, it's nothing really special. It's just a, you know, nice linen. And I'm going to refashion it into more like a pinafore like I'm wearing here. So I, uh, let me turn this inside out because this one has a story. I haven't actually put this on the mannequin yet. It's a good way to tell if it's actually going to fit me, I suppose, on my me mannequin here. As I've been putting this on myself, I kind of, like, it's a bit too big for me, but I've just thought it looks a bit weird and odd, like the shaping of it. As I've pinned this, this is my pins in here already. I've discovered that it has already been altered. Someone else has already had their hand at refashioning this before me. So, first of all, the back darts. If you look really close, you can see they've already been stitched down. They have this second row of stitching that is a different colored thread. And well, I uh, can't say it was done the best. One of these layers here is an extra little flap of fabric. Uh, so hence why it might not be quite too even. Um, 
The other side's a little bit better, but kind of not really too, because uh, look at the angle of this. Let me see if I can get this here. So following the line of the original dart, looks quite nice, tapers off, tapers off to a night finish. Look at this one that they've, um, I don't want to use the word hack, but uh, they've stitched down through here, this really sharp curve like this, and then it came off over the top of the regular dart. And there's this piece here. So it, this is what the outside will look like in this like wavy M shape. No wonder that the darts and the back sits a bit weird. That's not even a measuring like a straight line. This should be blended in really seamlessly, either to finish off at the same spot or the same thing, blended down so it just tapers off nicely. You know what darts are supposed to look like. So that was one thing that was like, okay. <laughs> and then I looked at the side seams and of course found some more dramas over here. There is of course the uh, other red color stitching to Telltale and well, a bit of a chunk over on the overlocking here, different colored threads that tell me it's been taken in of course already. And I can see the original stitching and then the new one cuts in from just sort of under the bust line, comes down and then again, it's kind of a bit wavy through here. It's definitely not a straight line. So the side seam will be very uh, bumpy as we come down further. It has like bumps again. So from the waist, it comes in here and then out here and then in here again before it actually then tapers off to the hem. So no wonder the side seams looked all weird and distorted and just kind of looked, well, wrong because it should be a nice smooth flowing line. So I found that rather interesting and gave me um, some ideas, an indication of why it might have looked a little bit messier than it should have when it was sitting on me. It's just those seams and those alterations weren't done quite as well as say I might have done. But uh, it's I always find it so interesting to see. I wonder what this garment was like and what life it had before uh, whoever altered it last time. And I hope that they wore it and loved it uh, and got it to fit them just the way that they wanted at least. Because I know I'm sending this on. This is going to be refashioned, as I said, pinafore like this one, which is already pinned waiting to go. But that is for another day. Uh, let me know if you found this really interesting in the comments below. What did you find the most interesting? I'd love to hear it. And also if you have some stories of your own garment archeology, span because it's fascinating, fascinating. We're all sewing nerds here. I know you geek out as much as me. I mean, that's why you're still listening to this video, right? It is super interesting to find the garment construction and the stories that some of our garments tell us by looking close inside. I hope you do your own garment archeology span and until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing, <laughs> bye.